Hello everyone, this is Sudeep Santoshi and you are watching Daily Med. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about pneumonia. We are going to discuss about the causes of pneumonia, the risk factors of pneumonia, the mode of transmission, the signs and symptoms that are shown by the person when having pneumonia, the diagnostic test to be done when we suspect someone with pneumonia and of course the treatment or the drug of choice to be used for treating pneumonia. Also, if you want to know about pneumonia in more detail, the pathophysiology of pneumonia that how infiltration occurs within our lungs, please find the link in the description box given below. Pneumonia Pneumonia is an inflammatory condition of the lungs affecting primarily the small air sacs also known as alveoli. It is an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both lungs. The air sacs may fill with pus or fluid, thereby causing cough with phlegm or pus, fever, chills and difficulty in breathing. What are the causative agents that cause pneumonia? So causative agent can be bacteria. The most common bacteria include the Streptococcus humani or Microplasma pneumonia. It can be virus. Virus can be influenza virus, coronavirus, and there are certain other viruses that cause pneumonia. If it is fungus, it can be Pneumocystis gyroenchi. Also, pneumonia is caused by chemical exposures. Also, it is caused by food aspiration. Food aspiration occurs when the food particles goes or enter inside our trachea, thereby reaching our alveoli and the inflammation of the alveoli occurs. Risk factors. So risk factors include those people who are who have an increased risk of getting the chances of infection or the pneumonia, those who are more vulnerable. So those who smoke are more vulnerable to pneumonia, also who are younger than one year old or older than 65 year old. Those who have impaired immune system, those who are alcohol drinkers, those who have recent cold or flu, also those who live in densely populated areas and with other medical conditions. So these are some risk factors that are included in pneumonia. So we will talk about the mode of transmission that how the transmission of pneumonia takes place, the transmission of bacteria, the transmission of virus, how they reach inside our lungs so it can be due to uh, through droplet infection or it can be through airborne. So signs and symptoms include the patient will have a productic cough. The cough can be rusty or green or blood tinged. Patient can have fever or chills. Patient can have chest pain. Patient can have difficulty in breathing. Can have tachycardia. Tachycardia that is the increase in heart rate. Patient can have nausea and vomiting. Also, the patient can have body weakness. Also, when we suspect someone with pneumonia, we can order certain diagnostic tests like chest X-ray and CT scan in which we can find pulmonary infiltrates or the infiltration which is going on within our lungs. Also, we can do arterial blood gas analysis also known as ABG in which we can see how much oxygen is going from our lungs to the blood and how much CO2 is remaining in our blood. Also, we can see alkalosis and acidosis. We can also take the sputum sample of the patient and we can do its culture and sensitivity. Also, we can do bronchoscopy and thoracentesis. Thoracentesis is a procedure in which a needle is inserted into the pleural space between the lungs and the chest wall. This procedure is done to remove excess fluid known as pleural effusion from the pleural space to help you breathe easier. Also we can do blood test. We can order CBC also known as complete blood count in which if we see the increased number of WBC we can see and we can conclude that the infection is occurring. Now we are going to discuss about the treatment of pneumonia. We can give antibiotics if the bacteria is the cause. 
our choice of antibiotics will totally depend upon that specific bacteria that is responsible for causing pneumonia. We can give macrolids like azithromycin, clarithromycin. We can give chloroquinolones like levofloxacin, cephalosporins like safurozyme, cefaclor. We can give penicillins like amoxicillin, comoxiclav, and ampicillin. If the cause is virus, we can give antiviral therapy. For viruses like SARS, MERS, antiviral therapy is available, but their activity is unknown. But they are tried. For COVID-19, there is still now no specific treatment. We can also give cough syrup, but do not take cough syrup so much as it can suppress the cough. So now we are going to discuss antibiotics in detail. Azithromycin. Azithromycin is an antibiotic that fights bacteria. Azithromycin is used to treat many different types of infections caused by bacteria such as respiratory infections, skin infections, air infections and sexually transmitted diseases. Clarithromycin on the other hand is a macrolid antibiotic that fights bacteria in your body. Clarithromycin is used to treat many different types of bacterial infections affecting the skin and the respiratory system. It is also used together with other medicines to treat stomach ulcers caused by Helicobacter pylori. Levofloxacin Levofloxacin is used to treat bacterial infections of the skin, sinuses, kidneys, bladder or prostrate. Levofloxacin is also used to treat bacterial infections that causes bronchitis or pneumonia. Our next antibiotics include Cefirozyme. Cefirozyme is a cephalosporin antibiotic. It works by fighting bacteria in your body. Cefirozyme is used to treat many kinds of bacterial infections including severe or life-threatening forms. Cefaclor on the other hand is also a cephalosporin antibiotic. It works by fighting bacteria in your body. Cefaclor is used to treat many kinds of bacterial infections such as bladder infections, air infections, skin infections or infections of the respiratory tract. Amoxicillin is used to treat many different types of infections caused by bacteria such as tonsillitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, gonorrhea, and infections of the air, nose, throat, skin, or the urinary tract. Comoxiclav, on the other hand, is a combination of amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium. Amoxicillin is an antibiotic in a group of drugs called penicillin. Amoxicillin fights bacteria in the body, whereas clavulinate potassium is a form of clavulinic acid which is similar to penicillin. Clavulinate potassium fights bacteria that is often resistant to penicillins and other antibiotics. Ampicillin, on the other hand, is used to treat or prevent many different types of infections such as bladder infections, pneumonia, gonorrhea, meningitis, or infections of the stomach or intestine. If you like this video, hit the like button. We thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions and queries, please feel free to comment in the comment section given below. Daily Med will be indeed fortunate to answer them all. Also, if you want to know the pneumonia in more detail, that how infiltration in the lungs occur, how the alveoli of lungs are attacked, please find the link in the description box. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to motivate us more keep posting updated contents and press the bell icon. Don't forget to follow Daily Med on Facebook. Thanks for watching Daily Med.